If you like your British cars, you like a V8 engine, and you like a lot of power, then back in the 90s, these two were the absolute pinnacle. They might sound like they come from the same recipe though, but they're actually really quite different. We're gonna take them for a drive and find out why in a minute. Now, regular viewers will remember our Bentley Turbo R project that we acquired uh, a few months ago, but this is an altogether far more rare beast, the Daimler Super V8, the sort of absolute top of the line X308, uh, a Daimlerized version of the uh, Jaguar Supercharged V8 Saloon. So uh, I think this will make a really interesting comparison. You know, there's nothing else quite like the Turbo R. No other car offers the same combination of sheer bulk and unlikely speed. But do you know, like all the best cars, the Turbo R very nearly didn't actually happen. It was the idea of the Rolls-Royce uh, boss at the time, David Plasto, went into the development team and said, come on, let's have a bit of fun. And he wanted to explore new technologies like turbocharging. So he borrowed a Silver Shadow development car, sent it off to Broadspeed, the race prep people, and it came back with 10% more power, but crucially 50% more torque. Everyone who drove it thought it was great and it's a little bit unwieldy, but the idea was taken from there and went, really. First we had the Mulsan Turbo, which was fast but unwieldy, and then a little bit later they found the funds, frankly, to uh, sort out the suspension. Legend goes that the development team brought their proposed uh, solution to the boss and he said, go away and make it twice as stiff, so they did. And then you had the Bentley Turbo R, which pairs the massive heft of the turbocharged V8 with acceptable road holding. It's fair to say that it was the Turbo R which completely transformed Bentley as a brand. After all, once it had started to outsell Rolls-Royce in 1991, there was no looking back. And the renewed sporting appeal that cars like the Turbo R gave to Bentley really resulted in the brand's appeal to companies like Volkswagen and BMW. And later we had the much publicized spat between BMW and Volkswagen, which saw Bentley end up with the Volkswagen Group. And you know, Volkswagen They've done a really good job with Bentley, and if you drive a new Flying Spur, it's got the same spirit as this car, a massive car with unlikely speed and really unexpected composure for such a big machine. This particular car is a 1990 model, so it's got about 320 horsepower. There's a massive Garrett T4 strapped to the six and three quarters V8, and it's not a high revving engine, it's, it's all out of puff at four and a half thousand, but it's got almighty low speed shove. I and mean, if you just step on it at low speed, we're doing 40 now, and you just, you just feel yourself eased back into the seat as it pulls away. In the Turbo R, the bonnet only lifts slightly because it's got the active ride in this model, so it does tend to stay pretty level. It's not just the straight line speed with the Turbo R. It's the unlikely combination of straight line speed and handling ability <laughs> and the two and a half ton weight. It's no GTI, but if you've got the courage, you can hurl it around like a GTI and it'll make a pretty good account of itself and you just float along and it's really, it's fingertip light. And you look down and you realize just how fast you're going. That's what it's all about, effortless high-speed travel. The very last of the Turbo R's left the production line in crew, if you can call it a production line, in late 97, which means that for most of the final year of production, the Daimler and the Turbo R were in the showrooms at the same time. Interesting choice, really. This cost a hefty 101,000 pounds. The Daimler cost 63,000 ish. The Daimler feels like a low slung, almost like a sports car. Whereas this does feel like a majestic great big bus. The Daimler, you can get into and drive just like a normal car. It's got a central gear shift. It feels the size of a normal car. You sit at a normal height. These though, you sit high up. You've got a column shift, which takes some getting used to. You can see all four corners quite easily because it's a square boxy shape, but it's a big car. And even on a, uh, we're on a reasonably wide main road here, but it's, you're still sort of hugging the white line and like looking anxiously at the verge. And I think the Daimler fits into your life more easily if you want to put it in a garage or you want to fit it on a normal sized driveway. You do need a lot of space for these cars. It's interesting to compare the ancestry of the two cars really. The Daimler is the X308 generation, which in turn was based on the X300, which was in turn a facelifted really XJ40. This car though is even older. The Turbo R is based on the Silver Spirit, which in turn was based on the Silver Shadow because Rolls just didn't have the budget to develop an all new car from the ground up. So really this is a 60s car with an 80s reskin and a 1950s V8 engine with a massive turbo. An unlikely combination, <laughs> but it results in a car that's really quite a lot of fun. And here we go again with the full 300 horsepower. <laughs> I just waved at another Daimler going the other way. That's a complete stranger out today in the same town in his Daimler. What are the chances of that? So 
hard to imagine that between Daimler and Bentley, that Daimler is the older and longest established car mark, first launched in 1896. Daimler was purchased by BSA in 1910. And then for about 50 years, Daimler sort of built up a reputation for engineering excellence, but it never really enjoyed the success that it perhaps should have done for a bunch of reasons. Come 1960, BSA offloads Daimler to Jaguar, who were very much keen on Daimler's engineering resource, particularly the Radford engine factory. And Daimler effectively just became a high-end rebadged Jaguar. So too is what we are in today, a Daimler Super V8, effectively an absolute top-end flagship Jaguar XJR, four litre supercharged V8 engine that you would see in a Jaguar XJR, but in a far plusher setting. It's more than just a fluted grille and a gold D badge on the nose. We've got lovely piped leather seats, lambs wool rugs, wood veneer picnic tables in the back, and crucially separate chairs in the back. But this four litre supercharged V8 engine is an absolute peach. What I love about it is it's got this great split personality. It can cruise along with a sublime refinement that will more than match the equivalent Bentley or Rolls-Royce. But if you really want to, and you kick down and that supercharger screams into life and it just barrels off into the horizon. Performance aplomb that would chew up a BMW M5. I'm not convinced that many Daimler owners would have necessarily utilized that performance. It's capable of 155 mile an hour top speed and 0 to 60 in about five and a half seconds. But I remember a Jaguar main dealer telling me there was such a fundamental difference between a Daimler customer and a Jaguar customer. He talks of a customer who came in every three years to buy the same car, the same spec, the same color, everything, and then put a private plate on it so that no one could tell the difference. Daimler was all about being understated, prestige, class, but without necessarily having to shout about it. It just glides along really made me appreciate how good an X308 is actually. I've got some modern engineering, but still a sort of classic feel to it because of its uh, slightly aging frame by this point. This has got electronic CATS suspension, sort of variable damping that meant to stiffen up the ride at high speeds. But at these kind of low speeds that we're traveling along now, the ride quality is, is exemplary, it really is. It's so relaxing. I think one of the tragedies really by the time you get to 1997 when this car was new is that the Daimler name had lost all of its luster really. I mean who knew what Daimler stood for by then? And this particular shape Super V8 soldiered on until 2003 when it was replaced with the all aluminium X350 XJ saloon and there was no Daimler equivalent at that point. It took Jaguar another couple of years to sort of half-heartedly introduce a Daimler version of the X350 saloon. So what are the Daimler Super V8 versus the Bentley? Well, in truth, they're, they're so different. The V8 engine under the bonnet of this is it's a high-tech engine compared to the Bentley 6.7 V8. This has a supercharger that screams at you, as the Bentley makes do with a brutal Garrett turbo. But the Bentley's got more torque. Bentley's got about 450, this has got about 380. But then this counters with it being lighter. It's about 1,800 kilos to the Bentley's 2400 and that for me is where the Daimler scores it just feels more nimble it feels more lightweight more svelte I think this has got an elegance to it that the, the Bentley lacks frankly I think we recognize the Daimler Super V8 that's what it is really an end of an era the final recognition that coach built classics like Daimler's were not really what the customer wanted anymore but for those who did and indeed those that still do Daimler Super V8 is really quite hard to beat. Well then, Paul, that was interesting. Yeah, certainly was. What's, uh, what are your thoughts? Well, I've been driving this Turbo R for quite a long time now, and I've only just had the chance to, to sample one of these again, and I, I, you know, the, the, the Daimler's lovely, it really is. I mean, I think the thing is, if you want the Turbo R, nothing else is going to do and having lived with this one for a bit i can see why people would think that i mean there's nothing like it and it is brilliant in its own way but the daimler's just that little bit easier to live with it's it's easier to fit down a crowded street it's easier to park you probably get it in a garage um, i think it's uh, probably for most people it's probably the, the sensible choice to be honest i think it's got pretty much most of the luxury the elegance and the grace of the bentley but it's also got this ability to 
sort of scurry off into the sunset thanks to the supercharged engine. I think the Bentley just feels a bit more brutal in comparison. If you ask us which one we're going to take home, well, I am actually taking this one home, so there's, there's my decision there. But you know, I will always be uh, slightly miffed that Phil's gone off in the Super V8 because I, I do love these Jags and it, it, it is a lovely car. I think though, like I said, if you want the Turbo R, there's nothing else it's going to do.